Time for me to introduce you to our first speaker for today. So our first artist is all the way from California in the US. She's a multidisciplinary artist who goes by her street name as Faith 47. Her art speaks volumes and can be seen as a catalyst of social changes. I want to introduce you all to Faith. Thank you so much for agreeing to come to this small webinar and welcome to Kalavashri. Over to you, Faith. Tell me about, a bit about yourself and, you know, what you'd like to do. Yeah, thanks for inviting me and the, the introduction with the music was really beautiful. Uh, you know, I'm from South Africa originally and uh, currently based in California, but I kind of feel more like a bit of a citizen of the world because I'm a little bit displaced. Um, yeah, but my roots are in South Africa. Fair enough. And so what, what's sort of your sort of journey from, you know, starting as an artist? How did you end up, you know, where you are at the moment? What was your journey? Just talk us through a bit about that. Sure. So I started painting in South Africa as a teenager, like doing graffiti art. And that was something that introduced me to the idea of public art and how my art can interact with an environment uh, and have something to do with the city itself, can be part of the city. And I became very interested in that kind of interaction. And for me, I do also do a lot of different different type of work like video and like gallery shows and that but the public element of my work is really special for me because I want my work to um, be relevant and to exist within the sphere of like the common man you know the pedestrian mm. and I think our cities are um, overrun with uh, advertising and we're, we're kind of um, a little bit lost in our cities and I think art can help us to uh, find some soul or find some individuality yeah. and, and that's important for me fair enough and correct me if I'm wrong but I know you like to work on like temporary location like you know like rubbles and like broken building what specifically like draws you to those kind of location you know the aspect of it being kind of temporary yeah, I've always loved painting in abandoned spaces or old buildings, like old walls that have like texture to them. For me, it's really, um, it's about the character of the space and the energy of the space. And there's like a memory there that's sitting from the past that you can kind of interact with. Like yeah. if you have like a white sterile wall, there's not much for you to, to play with. But when you're working in a space that already has like such a, such a history before you then you're stepping into something that you can have a conversation with and then it's not just about your image but it's about how your image uh, is is speaking to what's around it uh, and, and for me that's really interesting and when I travel we often will go and explore the city in ways that maybe a normal tourist wouldn't you know we'll go and look at like these kind of uh, more derelict spaces I guess and for me, it's also a little bit about how, uh, what society throws away, what we uh, deem as not uh, useful anymore in terms of uh, ideas of progress, you know? Yeah. So conceptually also kind of breaking down those ideas a little bit. So you said about traveling. Um, I'm curious where, which countries have you traveled and has that, you know, different sort of uh, cultures influence you in your art? Yeah, I started traveling from about 2006 because I started getting invitations to create site-specific works or do gallery shows. And um, I've been to, I think we, we counted it uh, recently because we were working on my bio. So like about 36 different countries. Um, wow. Yeah, a lot. So it, it's been really uh, quite an honor and privilege to be able to do that. Just to, you know, it would be like, in Madagascar, um, which is one of the world's like poorest countries, um, we'll be like in a bus with like chickens and like, you know, just like crazy Madagascan life and then flying to London and then you're on like the London tube and everyone's like gray faced, like looking down. Yeah. Uh, and, and you know, having these moments where you're just like, what is this world? Like that you can have these like completely different realities happening and they're not that far away from each other. Like we think of them as far away, 
but mm. they're really not like you can jump on a plane and be in a place like within you know what like 24 hours 12 hours five hours um and and so it kind of breaks down that separation uh, well that's a really beautiful thing to see right because then when you're watching the news and you're seeing like a situation in another country it suddenly doesn't feel that disconnected from you you start to be yeah. like oh that actually like we could be there in like a 10-hour flight that's crazy that like there's a famine right there and yet like we're sitting here totally comfortable like it, it's difficult to make sense of the world isn't it hmm. and i guess so, if you, i guess if you um you know if you've been to that place as well you can relate to it more easily i feel like anyway so if you've been to that specific country you know like you know you can relate to it more you, can, you know the culture there yeah, and, and you start to see the similarities between people in different cultures, even though the cultures are very different. There's like this base humanity that you get like similar types of people everywhere you go, right? Um, yeah. And so you start to see this thread of humanity when you travel. And another thing that's really good is that it kind of breaks down. Um, I mean, I've always loved to go to places that are so different from where I grew up, like culturally, that I, I really have to question like who I am, why do I feel these ways? Like, you know, what is the learned behavior? What is like just customary that you grew up with and what is actually you? So you yeah. start to question that and you start to break down like, oh, how do I feel, you know? Or like, what food do I like? <laughs> like, uh, like, what are my opinions? Uh, yeah. So I think that's also really a good thing about it. So I know your art speaks for itself. So it brings, um, you know, light to political and environmental problems. Um, do you believe that every work has to have a story or, you know, sometimes it can just be an art on its own. It doesn't have to have a story. What's yeah, I believe, like yeah, I think, um, you know, I, I really do think that nature is the greatest artist and, you know, you can just watch the clouds and that's the most incredible art or the sunset or, or the way the, the leaves are formed. Uh, I think art is um, like a poetry, right? Um, and sometimes an artist is drawn to speak um, about politics or social issues or love or pain. I mean, these are all just forms of expression of, of what that person is going through. So I, I think it's important to just be like, true to how you're feeling and your reaction to the time but I think it's often a natural thing that artists are going to be responding to the time they live in because that's just what we do right like mm -hmm. you don't live in a world as an island we're all kind of interconnected so um, it does feel like the natural thing to respond but that being said I also think that sometimes very subtle responses can be very effective too um, just you know, opening hearts, like having human connection, like simple things can be quite profound. It doesn't always have to be, um, you know, kind of obvious statements. Yeah. Are there yeah. any particular artists that inspire you or do you have someone that you look up to and you draw your inspiration from? I mean, I, I would say like several, many, many, you know, there's just so many profound artists. I and mean, one of the South African artists that I've always loved is William Kentridge. He's incredible. Atipatra Ruga is incredible. Um, I do think that a lot of the art coming from the African continent right now uh, and African diaspora too is just super soulful and uh, weighted. It has like a lot to teach the world. And, and so that interests me. Um, but yeah, I think my inspirations come not just from other artists, but just from everything, like from seeing what's going on in the news, like how that's impacting my own personal life or my family and friends and like uh, just everything, you know, like my investigations into perhaps like spirituality or death or, you know, all these things kind of inform, inform your work. Um, so a bit about your specific art there. So Silent Watcher is one of the um, one of your artwork, isn't it? Um, from recently. Um, yeah, that's a more recent work from Philadelphia. Yeah, can you tell us, you know, the process behind it? What what, what went into it? What was your thoughts behind it? Your inspirations? What made you, you know, come up with that idea? Um, that building is actually a social housing 
And I wanted to create a figure there that was kind of like a guardian of sorts or some kind of protective image. And so it's a divine feminine figure who is yeah. kind of watching over, you know, guarding or um, some kind of um, nurturing force, I would say. And, and there's a Noam Chomsky quote that um, we also brought into the mural which is um how does it go again um i do remember it now but it's uh um i can't remember it now offhand but anyway we we incorporated a uh, quote of noam chomsky he's born in philadelphia i wanted to pay homage to him mm. and um yeah do you have any favorites that you've done so far? I'm sure everyone, you know, throughout their life, like there must be, you know, a proudest achievement or like, you know, the proudest artwork you've done. Have you got anything like that in your mind? Yeah, well, first of all, I have to tell you the Noam Chomsky quote. It's optimism is a strategy for a better future. That's the quote. And I really like it. And I think especially what's happening now in the world, it's like, um, it's not necessary to believe that we're going to solve the environmental crisis, for instance, or everything that's happening, but we have to be optimistic and hopeful, right? And that's a strategy actually in us dealing with um, the world and not getting like totally overwhelmed with everything. Anyway, yeah. sorry, back to your question. <laughs> so I was saying, you know, everyone has a favorite or like um, a proudest achievement that, you know, they, they're always really proud of. Do you have any specific ones? Obviously, you, meant, you know, I've talked about Silent Watcher, but have you got any other favorites that stand out to you in your career? Yeah, I mean, uh, I did a project in South Africa, in Durban, um, which was um, six pillars of a freeway. And mm -hmm. we did really huge portraits of some of the informal traders in that, in that area. And also to pay homage and to kind of give them a physical like ownership of that space, like uh, symbolically there. So yeah. that to me was really beautiful because we had a lot of community interaction and I felt that uh, once I left that I felt like the artwork really got incorporated into the space and felt like it became part of the fabric of that space and kind of added to it. So for me, that was a kind of ideal situation and outcome because it's not always easy to achieve that, you know, um, so, yeah, I would say that that project. Um, another question being, so what, at what age did, you know, you were like, okay, this is the kind of profession that I want to go into. Um, you realize this is something that I really want to pursue. So what, what kickstarted it? What, where did you, you know, where did you have that light bulb mo uh, moment from? You know, I was always, um, really wanted to do art but uh, I had my son really young so and also um, didn't really have any formal art training I, I had to like do a lot of compromising along the way and um, it you know I was doing graphic design for a while in the beginning too and it was just kind of a slow burn and I knew that I wanted to get really independent and to do my own work, but I knew I had to study and work hard and, um, you know, like teach myself everything yeah. and basically like just put in the hours and put in the work. And I, I just did it very slowly and kind of, um, I think uh, from about 2006, I was getting a lot more independent and probably from about 2010, I would say that things uh, became a lot more stable and I was able to do a lot more of my own work but um, you know to the point where you are not taking on projects that you don't want to take on anymore I mean that's the ultimate aim that you get to do the work you want to do. Mm. Yeah. Um, obviously you know um, I feel like I can't avoid this question about the pandemic you know as an artist how has it affected you and you know what have you been doing to sort of like still continue your creativity during this lockdown? Yeah, it's super tough. And I think everybody has such a, a personal situation that is unique to their specific life and surroundings 100%. and has to deal with it in the way that they have to, um, that they can figure out. I mean, for me, I actually, um, I, I just stopped making work for a while. I just couldn't. I couldn't quite bring myself to create work. 
uh, I made one or two pieces that were kind of relatable to the situation. And then I, I felt that I wanted to um, study. So I've actually taken a step back and I've been doing some classes and uh, doing a lot of um, more like practicing my skills levels. Um, in terms of like responding to what's happening right now, I think I will. I just I haven't had the emotional capacity, energy to quite to quite go there. I think um, South Africa is struggling quite a lot, and it's weighing quite heavy on me. Um, and yeah, I think we shouldn't force ourselves or push ourselves. We have to do it naturally, as as you feel. And I, I know there will be a time where I can really respond properly, but it's a bit of a slow process. Mm. Um, so we talked about, you know, your passion for art as well. How would you, what advice would you give to like upcoming artists? You know, what would you sort of like tell your younger self? Like what advice would you? Well, what I, you know, one of the things I thought when I was younger that kind of helped me to push my, push myself to do this was, um, I imagined myself working in a nine to five job every day for the rest of my life. And I was like, well, imagine I put that time in and a bit more into my own work. Mm. Like, surely it's going to work out. Like, it has to, right? So, but you have to put the hours in. You can't, like, sit back and expect it to happen and for people to come to you. You have yeah. to be very, very like, DIY. Uh, like, do it yourself. Like, take the initiative. Uh, like, you know, just make things happen uh, and, and, and just work hard and eventually um it will pay off but also like put your heart in it and make sure that you're doing things like from the right place i guess i think if you have that combination like it, you know you won't be sorry 100 percent and mm -hmm. one more question is that obviously you know when you start working do you get any sort of blocks as in like do you kind of like you know do you just sit down and just kind of like finish through the work or do you kind of take breaks and then kind of like to you know take your time to slowly finish it like if you do get those kind of blocks like what would you sort of do like you know especially for like upcoming artists there's a few artists watching you how would you yeah. tell them to sort of like manage that road blockers for me the way i deal with it is that i work in different mediums so um sometimes i'll have like a painting that i'm working on and if it gets to a point where i'm not quite like happy with it i'll put it away and then i'll kind of work on something else so i have like some video projects or uh, maybe collage pieces that i have going in the studio um i i allow myself to kind of mix move from one medium to another medium and sometimes i get bored in one medium or there's something that interests me that inspires me to work it, it, with with ink maybe um, so I think a bit of flexibility helps so you're not always just doing the same thing uh, and perhaps you'll find a different voice when you're working in a different medium like that you can a actually speak differently like your vocabulary changes um, and your ways of kind of expressing yourself change so um, I think that's always been a, a nice um, solution for that for me Faith, I think it's time for us to wrap up there but thank you so much for joining oh, thank you so much it's been a pleasure meeting you and you know I wish you best of luck for the future and you know I'm interested to see more of your artwork as well but thank you so much for joining us with you know in well, collaboration well done for putting this all together it's great that you're like inspiring artists and yeah we're yeah. such a small community and we're just trying to you know like find the hidden talents within Kerala, within like different states of India as well. And hopefully artists like yourself can, you know, sponsor us, give us some support as well and inspire us as well. So thank you so Amazing. much. Yeah, I'll keep an eye on what you guys are doing for sure. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Ciao. Bye-bye.